in this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the properties of covariance. So as you can see over here, I have written 10 properties and we are going to take a look at all of these one by one. Note that these properties that I'm going to talk about, they are applicable for population covariance as well as sample covariance. Okay, so it doesn't matter whether you're working with population covariance or sample covariance, the same set of properties will be applicable. Okay, now before we start taking a look at these properties, take a look over here. So basically in these properties, A, B, C and D, these are going to represent constants and X and Y are going to represent random variables. In fact, I should have written X, Y and Z are going to represent random variables. Okay, wherever I have written Z over here, that is going to represent a random variable along with X and Y. Now, let's take a look at the first property. The first property is saying that the covariance between X, Y is equal to the covariance between Y, X. So the essence of this property is that when you're talking about the covariance, the order of the variable is not going to matter. So whether you write X, Y or whether you write Y, X is actually going to be one and the same thing. Okay, but why is this happening? Well, note down that what is the definition of covariance? The covariance is actually a measure of linear relationship. So covariance is a measure of linear relationship or you can also say it's a measure of linear association between two variables. Okay, so when you're talking about the association, which is in a linear manner, whether you talk about the linear relationship between X and Y or whether you talk about the linear relationship between Y and X, it's one and the same thing over here. Right? So it does not really matter whether you say the covariance between X and Y or whether you say the covariance between Y and X. Basically, when you're working with covariance, there is no concept of dependent variable or independent variable. These are just two variables and you're trying to figure out a linear association between these two variables. If you have done regression analysis, then you should know that this is not something that happens in the case of regression analysis. Because when you're working with regression analysis, then the order matters a lot. Because when you're working with the regression analysis, then you have to mention what is your dependent variable and what is your independent variable. And if you reverse the order, it is going to change things. Okay, but in the case of covariance, there is no concept of dependent variable or independent variable. So, you know, the order of the variables is not going to matter at all. Okay, so that's your first property. Now, let's take a look at the second property and the third property. So, well, these two properties are you know, showing you a splitting mechanism, you know, so how are we going to split the terms? So let me write it over here. Note that I'm not going to write the entire word covariance. I'll just write COV. Okay. So if you have covariance of X plus Y with Z, and as I mentioned over here, X, Y, and Z, all of these are random variables. So the splitting mechanism works in this way. This is equal to the covariance of X with Z. So this is equal to the covariance of X with Z plus because you have a plus sign over here. So you will put a plus over here the covariance of y with z. Okay, so the covariance of y with z. So this is the splitting mechanism that we have. Now, if you take a look at the property number three, it's kind of the same as property number two. It says that instead of the plus over here, I have a minus over here. So how is covariance of x minus y comma z going to look like? Well, this is going to be covariance of x with z. So the covariance of x with z. And now because you have a negative sign over here, you're going to put a negative sign over here and then it's going to be covariance of y with z. So I hope this splitting mechanism that we have in covariance, you know, is clear. You can also have extension of these two properties, property number two and property number three. An extension will look something like this. So maybe you can have covariance of let's say x plus y plus let's say s, right? Where s is one more random variable, comma z. Okay, so in this case, the splitting mechanism is going to work in the same manner. You will have the covariance of x with z. So covariance of x with z, then you have a plus sign. So we are going to put plus over here. Then you will have covariance of y with z. So covariance of y with z. And then again, you have a plus sign. So we are going to put it over here. And in the end, you will have the covariance of s with z. Okay, so I hope property number two and property number three are clear. These are just talking about the splitting mechanism that we have in the case of covariance. Okay, let's move to the next one. So the next property is the covariance of X, which is a random variable with A, which is a constant is going to be zero. Well, this property is quite obvious because once again, what is, what is it that covariance is telling you? Covariance is a measure of linear association. Okay. Basically it tells you that how two things move together in a linear manner. Now, in this case, X is a random variable and A is a constant. So even if X moves, 
A as a constant is not going to move, right? So the covariance between X and A is definitely going to be zero because you cannot have a linear association between a variable and a constant, okay? Right? Now, this also implies that the covariance of, let's say, two constants is also going to be equal to zero. Needless to say, because A and B, both of them are constants, they are not going to move. That means they can never have any linear association. So obviously the covariance between them is also going to be equal to zero, right? So that's your property number four. Let's move to property number five. In property number five and six, there is a point that I want to make, and I'll make that point using these three properties, right? So in the property number five and six, I'm going to utilize basically the splitting mechanism that you learned in property number two and three, and I'm also going to use property number four, okay? So let me first show you that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, and then I'll tell you about that, you know, how are you going to remember it, okay? So basically, what is it that we have on the left-hand side? We have covariance of x plus a, comma y. Now, using the splitting mechanism, we know that we can write it as covariance of x with y, so covariance of x with y, plus covariance of a with y, right? So covariance of a, with y. Now this is equal to covariance between x and y but over here a is a constant and y is a variable and as I told you that you know you can never have a covariance between a constant and a variable so this is going to be zero that means this is just equal to covariance between x and y and that's what I have written in property number five. Similarly the property number six is the covariance of x minus a comma y so how can I write this this is covariance of x with y so using the splitting mechanism this is that Minus because we have a minus sign over here and then this is going to be covariance of a comma y. Once again, the covariance of a with y is going to be zero. That means this is just equal to covariance between x comma y. Okay. Now, the main thing that you have to understand from the property number five and the property number six that the addition of a constant or the subtraction of a constant, right, to any of the variables is not going to change the covariance. Okay, remember this property, this is a very, very, you know, important property that if you're finding the covariance of x comma y and someone asks you that, okay, if the covariance of x comma y is, let's say, hypothetically equal to 3, what's going to be the covariance of x plus 4, okay, uh, comma y? Well, again, it's going to be 3. The addition of this constant is not going to matter. Similarly, even the subtraction is not going to matter. So the covariance of x minus 4 comma y will also be equal to 3. So the addition of a constant to any of the variables, you can just ignore it. It is not going to affect the covariance addition or the subtraction. Okay. But be careful when you are talking about the multiplication or division, those are going to affect your covariance. And that's what I'm going to talk about in the property number 7. Okay, so now let's move to property number seven. Now note that in the property number seven, we are not adding or we are not subtracting. We are multiplying your random variables with constants. Okay, so X is multiplied by A and Y is multiplied by B. Now the multiplication of a random variable or the division of a random variable by a constant, these things are going to change your covariance, right? So let's take a look at this, that what is happening over here and how can you remember this? Basically the covariance of A, X, B, Y now, because over here you have a multiplication, what's going to happen? That this A will come out, okay, and this B will also come out, right? So, this will become A times B times covariance between X and Y, okay? Now, note that this video is just a quick overview of the properties of covariance. So, I'm not getting into the mathematical proof of this, but this is something that you have to remember because this is going to help you, okay? So, now similarly, you know, you can also say this for the division. So, for example, what I'm trying to say is that if your A is equal to 3 and your B is equal to 2, the covariance of 3x comma 2y is equal to 3 times 2, okay? So, this is x, right? And this is 3 times 2. This is not 3x2. This is 3 times 2. So, it's going to be 6 times covariance between x comma y. So, this is going to be six times of the covariance between x comma y right now similarly you can also work with the division right so basically i can also have covariance of one over three times x and one over two times y okay the same thing is going to happen over here basically in this case a is equal to one over three and b is equal to one over two okay so you're dividing your variables by a particular constant but you know you can also think of it you know, the division is also one form of multiplication. So over here, you are dividing x by 3, but it is equivalent to saying that you are multiplying x by 1 over 3. Okay, so in this case, it will be 1 over 3 
uh, times 1 over 2. This will come out and you will have the covariance between x and y. Okay, so be careful with the multiplication and the division. If you are multiplying a random variable or if you are dividing a random variable by a constant, it is definitely going to affect your covariance. Okay, so that's your property number seven. Now, let's take a look at the property number eight. Well, property number eight has nothing new, but basically it is based on all of these properties that we have learned over here. Okay, so let's see what is it that the property number eight is telling us. So the covariance between a plus b y comma c plus d x now we have to evaluate what is this equal to well follow these steps right now see one of the shortcuts that you can use you can see that a is a constant and we know that the addition of a constant is not going to matter and c is also a constant so we know that addition of a constant over here also is not going to matter so i can just directly write it as covariance of b y comma d x okay and now we have just done this in your property number seven that I can take B out, which is a constant. I can also take D out, which is also a constant. And this is covariance of Y comma X. Okay. Well, that's what I have written over here. So I go from here to here because the plus A and the plus C are not going to matter. Right. And then over here, I took B and D out. And, and you know, this is what you get. Right. Now, there is one more way of doing it. If you want to, you know, solve this using the splitting mechanism just for the sake of practice. You can also do it. I'll, I'll show it to you very quickly. So for example, let's say you are not willing to use the shortcut that I just told you. And let's say you use the splitting mechanism. Okay, now how is the splitting mechanism going to work? Note that you have to create combinations, right? So you are going to create the combination of A with C. You know, then you're going to split this. So you will also have covariance of A with C. Then you will have plus covariance of A with DX. Okay, then you will have the covariance between these two and then you will have the covariance between these two. So then it will become the covariance of BY comma C plus the covariance of BY comma DX. Now, ultimately, if you see, this is the covariance of two constants. So it's going to be zero. This is the covariance of a constant with a variable, right? See, why is DX a variable? Because if X is a random variable, so if X is a uh, RV, RV means random variable. Okay. So if X is a random variable, D times X is also going to be a random variable because D is just a constant, right? So this is the covariance of a constant with a random variable. We know this is going to be zero. So this is zero. This is zero. This is again, Y is a random variable. So B times Y is also a random variable. And you're finding the covariance of a random variable with a constant. This is also going to be equal to zero. So ultimately the first three terms are zero and you are just left with this. Okay, which is nothing but B times T times covariance between Y and X, right? So ultimately, you are going from here to here, whatever way you want to remember it, but this is going to be a very useful property. Okay, now let's move to the next property, which is the covariance of a variable with itself is the variance of that variable. Now, there is also a mathematical proof of this property number nine, but we are not going to do that over here because this is just a quick overview. But remember this, that the covariance of X with X is equal to variance of X. Now, I'll tell you what is one mistake that many students do. See, there are two concepts. One is covariance, okay, and one is correlation. So in this video, I'm not talking about correlation, but there are two concepts, okay? Covariance is also there and correlation is also there. Now, if we find the correlation of a variable with itself, that is equal to plus one. Okay, now what is correlation? I'm not talking about it over here, but if you see somewhere that there is correlation of a variable with itself, it is going to be plus one. But if it's a covariance of a variable with itself, it is going to be the variance of that variable. Now, the mistake that I've seen many students doing is that they write covariance of a variable with itself as plus one, and this is wrong. Okay, covariance of a variable with itself is the variance of that variable and the correlation of a variable with itself is always going to be equal to plus one, right? This is always going to be equal to plus one and this is always going to be this. Okay, so I hope the property number nine is also clear. Now, let's talk about the property number 10, which is the last property and one of the most important properties that we have. Well, this property is saying that if X and Y are independent, then the covariance between X and Y is going to be zero. However, the vice versa is not true. See, what does it mean when we say that X and Y are independent? See, when we say that X and Y are independent, it means that X and Y, right, they do not have, so they don't have any relationship, right? Any, 
okay so they do not have any relationship and when we say that they do not have any relationship it covers both the types of relationships that means x and y don't have a linear relationship they also don't have a non-linear relationship so when someone says that x and y are independent it means there is no linear relationship okay so there is no linear relationship between x and y at the same time there is no non-linear relationship between x and y so there is no non-linear relationship as well okay so there is no non-linear relationship and there is no linear relationship now if i tell you that x and y are independent as i just told you it is going to imply this obviously the covariance is going to be zero okay because as i told you in the beginning of this video covariance has only to do with the linear associations right covariance is just a measure of linear relationship okay so covariance is not going to tell you anything about non-linear relationships between two variables it is only going to tell you about linear relationships between two variables now if x and y are independent it means no linear relationship and if there is no linear relationship it means that the covariance is going to be zero okay so this side of the story was kind of simple to understand the main thing that you have to understand over here is this part that the vice versa is not true and let me talk about this part by giving you one example so when we say vice versa is not true this figure is going to help us in understanding that so basically what i'm saying is that if x and y are independent if they are independent then this does imply that the covariance between x and y is equal to zero however if we talk about the vice versa scenario where if the covariance between x and y is equal to zero this does not imply that x and y are independent okay right so you can go from here to here but you cannot go from covariance to independence right and the symbol that i have written over here this means does not imply okay now i i'm going to talk about this you know with the help of this figure now if you see over here this is your y variable this is your x variable if you see over here y and x have a non-linear association right so they do have a quadratic type of relationship over here so if i show you this figure then are they independent no because x and y are dependent okay they are related they cannot be independent because i can clearly say that they have a non-linear relationship right so x and y are dependent they have a non-linear relationship they are not independent right so they are not independent but if you talk about the covariance remember that covariance is only a measure of linear association right now over here do you see any linear association between these two variables no right so there is no linear association over here so you have absence of linear association between these two variables or in other words x and y do not have any linear relationship and if x and y do not have any linear relationship then the covariance is going to be what zero okay so make sure you understand this well i'm going to repeat this once again so if the covariance between x and y is equal to zero okay it is only going to reflect it is only going to reflect no linear relationship okay so tomorrow if somebody tells you that their variables have a zero covariance the only meaning of that statement is that there is an absence of a linear association that does not mean that there is no non-linear association right it may happen that there is no linear association but you know the variables could be still related in a non-linear manner okay so if your covariance between x and y is equal to zero it does not imply that x and y are independent because you may still have a non-linear relationship for example in this case a quadratic relationship okay i hope this is clear and that's it for this video.